Hello viewers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Once again, my name is Daniel and my YouTube channel is called Daniel's Farm. Today I decided to bring you to Western Uganda to show you how the people here graze their cattle. Join me on this adventure as we enjoy. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. It is 10 a.m. in the morning and the herdsman has set his flock on the road to the grazing grounds. It is a long journey of about one kilometer and because the major parts of the road are green, the flock cannot wait but start feeding on the grass of the road. The major feeds for cattle and sheep in this area are green grass and green vegetables. Due to the long distance from home to the grazing grounds, the lambs could not match the pace of their parents. However, they cannot give up. They have to walk to the grazing grounds to meet their parents to graze together. Wow, finally, there they are. Each lamb is looking for its mother. The first lamb has seen its child, and the remaining three have to go and also meet their parents as well. It is amazing experience. At this point, the herdsman has to guide the sheep together with the cattle to the best grazing grounds so that they can start feeding for the day. He does, he does this almost every day. Every day that he brings the cattle and sheep to these grazing grounds, he has to direct them such that they get the best feed for the day. As the cattle are feeding on the other side, the sheep are also on the other side feeding as well. It is very common to find cows and sheep feeding together. Here the cattle and sheep mainly feed on green grass. And as they are feeding, the herdsman is somewhere seated watching his cattle and sheep feed. He has to sit somewhere and watch them to make sure they do not go into people's gardens or they do not cross into other people's lands. Because mainly here the land is divided into portions with each part belonging to a different owner. So the herdsman, one of the major roles of the herdsman is to make sure that the cattle or the sheep do not cross into other people's lands. He has to be there every day to watch them and make sure they graze from the specific areas where they were allocated to feed. This particular land on which the herdsman is grazing his cattle is approximately two and a half hectares and this is enough for him to graze his cattle all day. Luckily on the same piece of land there are guavas from which the herdsman can at any time of the day when he feels hungry 
goes, picks some guavas, eats, as he goes on to look after his cattle. This helps him not to get bored, not to get so hungry, as he has to do this work on a daily basis from morning up to evening. After a long day of feeding, as you can see, the sheep are tired and some of them need to rest. The same applies to the cows. After a long day of feeding, you will notice that these animals will find time to rest. Just like any human being will eat and then at one point you feel like you should get some rest, you keep the rest of the food and then you can continue later on. This applies to animals as well. So after a long dog feeding, they get some rest. As I was still observing the cattle feeding, in one corner of the field, I noticed this particular place where there was no grass. When I asked the herdsman, he told me that during the sunny season or during the dry season, this place is a very good place for the cows where they come and rest when the sunshine is too much or when the sun is too hot. This place creates a very conducive environment, that is, it creates a good shed for the cattle to rest. As you can notice, they are now tired of feeding. This is, about, uh, this is after about five hours of feeding, and now most of them are tired. And as you can notice, they are all heading to this particular place where they want to stand for about two and a half hours. Then later on, they will continue with the feeding up to evening when they will be taken back to their place. And as the cows are taking rest from the other side, the sheep are also on the other side resting under the sun. They have separated themselves without the guidance of the herdsman. The cows are on a different side and the sheep are on a different side. At this time, the herdsman together with his friend are able to rest as well. As the herdsman is resting, he seems to have forgotten something. As I stood there, I noticed him standing up, walking to this particular place and picking a piece of cow dung on the stick he was holding in his hands, he goes to this particular cow and smears the cow dung on the cow's breasts. Wow! I wanted to know why he did this. 
So he told me that the reason he smears cow dung on the cow's breasts is to prevent the calf from sucking the milk from its mother. Because most of the times when they leave the calf to suck the breasts of its mother, they will end up not getting milk in the evening and at times the milk can choke. The, for those who are wondering whether cows are friendly animals, I would say yes. Just like any other animal, once a cow or once cows get used to you, they will be so friendly. As you can see, the herdsman is very well associating with the cow, touching its head, and nothing is happening to him. Cows are very good animals and they can be friendly once they get used to you, just like any other animal.